Hello, if you are tuning in right now, you're tuning into the Logmont Museum, and we are going to be doing an Impressionist painting, a modern Impressionist painting, and we'd love for you to paint along with us, and hopefully that's what you tuned in for. Um, we're going to be painting some aspens um, inspired by artist uh, Aaron Hansen. My name's Aaron Angel, and I am an instructor here at the Longmont Museum in Longmont, Colorado. And I'm looking out right now at the sunset over the Rockies. You can see from classroom A, B, and it's a fabulous sight that's gonna inspire our paintings a little bit. So I'd like you to get together some of your supplies if you haven't done that already. And you've been given kind of a generic list of supplies if you looked ahead of time, but don't worry if you didn't have all those. Um, mine are a little bit different. In fact, we don't need very much stuff at all. So you're gonna start off with a canvas of some kind. Mine's pretty small. Mine's 11 by 14, I believe. Um, it's a value pack. It's a pretty rough one. I prefer them a little smoother. It doesn't really matter. Um, it will turn out fine just how it is. So just um, 11 by 14 is what I've got. You can use whatever you have. You could even, if you wanted to paint this on heavy paper or cardboard, that works as well, if that's what you need to do. Um, I'm gonna switch cameras right here and show you the other things that we're gonna be using. Aha, uh -huh. so we're going to be using um, only four colors of paints tonight. So, um, and if you don't have the exact colors, it's okay. Um, it will turn out fine. And um, you, it's just an experiment, an experiment and see what you like. So I'm starting with cad yellow or cadmium yellow, and this is the deep hue, um, but you, and this is just Liquitex Basics. Um, you could get this at pretty much any art supply store. Um, this is kind of the generic version of Liquitex Basics. Um, and this is phthalo blue. Um, you could use, I, you could use other blues if you wanted to. I don't think it's that important. Um, I really like this one. And this one, you might have a lizard and crimson instead. And that's okay. But I am really having fun with brilliant magenta. So grab that if you've got it. If not, use a lizard and crimson. And then you're going to need plenty of just a white or just white um plenty of white because we're gonna we have to bring down the blue and make things a little more opaque with white so those are your colors that you're gonna need i'll leave these up you're going to need a cheapo big brush okay um if you don't have that use a little, little brush and just do it differently i mean you can even use like a foamy brush that's okay too or if you didn't have that, you could probably use a paper towel. Probably use that too. Um, I've got two cheapo brushes in case in it. Um, and then I just have a selection also of cheap brushes. But the really the ones that I want you to have for sure, if you can, are a flat quarter inch. Um, it can be a little smaller or a little bigger than a quarter inch, a flat quarter inch, and a flat half inch. Those are really nice to have right there. And then maybe a round detail brush. And it doesn't really matter. This one's pointy. This one's a little more round right here. Um, it doesn't really matter. You're going to be able to make some awesome trees with any of that. You're also going to want some sort of uh, paper towel, this kind of paper towel, that kind of paper towel. Um, I also like to use a rag and a cup of water. and this is also a good time to get your sip on because this is an art and sip and it might make it more fun. So I'm going to give you a few minutes while I reset up um, to set up your work area. I to have a nice clear space. Some people like to put things under. I like to ruin the museum's tables myself, um, our work tables. I like like to come back and say, no, oh, that's where I painted that one thing. So, and I also do that at home. I have a table that I just kind of destroy. And it makes me happy when I go back and see it. Oh, I also forgot, you're going to need a palette of some kind. I use, this is my family's dinner plates. Um, so right now while they're eating dinner, they're short one plates. And I just use a dinner plate, that's what I use. So go ahead and get that. I'll give you a few minutes and get your sip on. 
and tell me in the comments in the chat what the sip is. That might be fun. All right, some of you are probably already ready. Um, I'll switch over this. So you may be an accomplished artist and already know all your stuff. I like to do things that make me super comfortable while I'm arting. So pull your hair back so your hair does not get into your painting because that's all. If, you know, tomorrow you, when you find the paint in your hair, you can say, oh, I painted last night. That's pretty cool. Um, and make sure you're wearing something that it's okay to get paint on. I kind of have some designated things that I like to wear while I'm painting. So get that done too. All right. So I'm going to get started and get set up. So um, I'm going to get some white on my palette and you won't be able to see it very well in this lighting. Um, kind of funny story. Um, earlier this evening, I was painting like a pre-painting to warm up. Um, and I opened up my white and this white was not packaged in Colorado. I opened it with my teeth as one does with these things and it burst into my mouth. And guess what? It doesn't taste so good. I'm gonna put kind of a good amount of white in there because I'm just going to, but you don't have to put, you know, more than a tablespoon or so on there. You can always get more. And we're going to start out with blue. And you see, I don't really have that much blue. I might do a little side dot. I kind of sometimes have side dots of things. And that's all I've got going on right now. Um, and I'm going to start out with my big brush. So before we really get painting, um, I kind of want to look at my canvas and see where I want things. And some people, when they're teaching a class, don't uh, show you a final product to strive for, but I, I like to. Some of you can, and you can pull these up on the internet if you want to. Um, this image right here was kind of an inspiration image. I don't know if you know who Erin Hansen is, but I absolutely love her modern impressionism. Let's see if we can see this right here. And this image, um, Aspen Mosaics, just really struck me. Um, and we're not doing exact, we're gonna do our own take on this because we live in Colorado and we have our own Aspens and, and um, we can do what we feel like and just go off this. But I really liked, and I don't know if you'll notice in here, how um, how there was a lot of foliage that was golden and the light sh shines through it. And then there's undergrowth and then how all the tree branches kind of make a mosaic. They kind of crisscross and then there's color in between them. And that will be kind of a style that we're gonna do. Usually you paint all your background and then you paint on top of it, but we're not gonna do that actually we're going to, we're still going to paint back to front, but we're going to go back to front to back again, and then a little more on top and front. Sounds confusing. It won't be too confusing though, I don't think. Um, so that's one thing to strive for. I did a few, um, a few paintings ahead of time to warm up, make sure I knew what I was doing, what I like to do. And so this is kind of what you saw when you signed up for the class or you tuned in for the class. And this is my take on that. Um, notice there's a, a lot of yellow in the middle. I like that golden yellow kind of in the middle as a highlight. There's a little blue on the side and there's a lot of undergrowth. And it's about in one third sections. And I just want you to notice that. And there's a lot of trees. In this painting, we are in the forest. We're not looking at trees from afar. We are actually standing in the trees. So as I'm setting up my canvas and thinking about where I want, I'm thinking uh, the rule of thirds, which we you know, almost always do if you do that in photography and in, in painting. So I've got thirds here, one, 
two, three, and one, two, three. And I am going to make a very wet brush, okay? And I am going to actually now turn over the brush. I like to use the back of my brush to mix. I'm gonna mix this dot of blue in with the white. And then I take my very wet brush and I'm gonna make a very, very pale translucent blue, okay? And I painted like the whole thing. Right. So I am going to um, paint a little bit in the back, okay? A little bit in the background. Where I don't think I'm gonna have a lot of yellow. I know I'm gonna have a lot of yellow in here because I like the sun behind that, behind the trees. So I'm not gonna paint right in here. I'm gonna paint a little bit, super light blue there. I know I'm gonna want some light blue in that center, down low in the center, do that. And then I'm gonna pull in a little more of this light blue over to the edge, because I think I'm gonna have some, some sky showing through over there. And the sky is gonna be blue and a little pink, but we're gonna just start with blue. Now, the reason why I'm not doing the whole background is these paints tend to be a little translucent. I'm using inexpensive paint and inexpensive paint does not always have um, the opacity that you want, of the, the stick sticking that you want. Um, and so I don't wanna compete with that the whole rest of the night. I want this to be a kind of a quicker painting that, than that. So I painted with crisscross strokes, kind of a quick painter. Um, you can barely see it. And there's just a little bit of blue right there. If you want, if you want to, that you're done with this brush, you can stick it in your water or you can um, toss it in the sink, whatever you do with your brushes, whatever you like to do. Okay, so next we're going straight to trees. But we're going to go back from back to front with trees. Now, um, some people just like to make up trees, and that's okay if you do. Um, I am going to work from some pictures of trees. So I'm going to do aspens um, because that's what this painting is. Um, I'm going to work from aspens, and I usually pull it up on the internet. It's kind of a lot for me to juggle internet and live streaming. So I actually printed up pictures. These are pictures that I took of aspen trees just knowing that I was painting aspen trees I'm just on hikes here. Um, Brainerd Lake, and this is Caribou Ranch. Anybody recognizes any of this? So I have some cool aspens like this. I would take this time, if I were you, I would take this time to open up a tab and just put in the words aspen trees, aspen tree foliage, fall foliage, and pull up some images. And just look at some aspen trees. Okay, let's add these images. So take a couple of minutes to do that and have that in a tab so you have some trees to look at. Um, making up trees is, is fine. Um, I personally like to paint from real trees. So if I'm out, I'd rather be out and looking at the trees. But if I can't be out, the next best thing is a photo. And the internet has great ones, so just pull them up. So you're gonna, once you've got your, your trees and some trees that you kind of like looking at, you don't have to do exactly, but they're just there to switch back and forth and say, hmm, and that tree has a branch goes this way. Oh, that tree has a branch like that. This is how trees are laid out. We're gonna start painting our background trees. So you can have, um, I'm going to do a wedged brush, which I didn't even tell you you needed to have, but I just grabbed this one and it looks like fun. Um, or a quarter inch brush. I'm gonna get that wet. Dab it off dry. And then I pull up my palette and I am gonna go a little darker blue than I just did. So mostly um, in a lot of modern is, modern impressionist painting, we don't do a lot of mixing um, on the palette, you layer as you're mixing, but this blue uh, needs, needs some white to bring it out. So I'm going to mix some blue and some white, and I'm gonna get a lighter blue 
for the background. Okay. And I'm going to also squeeze in some of my crimson on the palette right now. I don't need much. A little bit of crimson on the palette so that I can dip into that as I feel like it, because I might decide that I want some purple in the background trees. So I'm gonna have a lot of trees in the background here. So I'm just gonna start. And some people go from bottom to top. Some people go from top to bottom on the trees. I'm gonna go from top to bottom this time. Oh, maybe not. Maybe I wanna go bottom to top. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that, okay. And I'm just gonna start painting some light trees in the background, okay? And then go, maybe have a branch here. My trees get a little wider towards the bottom, just like the trees that are in the paintings. Aspen trees grow in groups, so definitely give everybody a buddy. These trees are gonna start um, just about at the third because they're background trees they're not going to start a couple background trees in the middle i'm just doing lines and lines from them my branches mostly are kind of going up because branches like to do that and that's what i'm seeing in my pictures there's some to the side I really like that tree and I think I want it to be a little more pronounced if you can see that. Um, so I'm going to actually make that tree a little wider at the base. And you're like, hmm. And usually when I do that, I end up adding some branches on onto it just so that I can continue my stroke and it's very fluid. Pick up a little more paint, don't need much. We have another couple trees here. Um, I need some crooked ones in the background, so I'm going to do that after this. Okay, a little, I don't like this tree much. It's going to be okay because I'm going to cover that up pretty soon. It's kind of an icky tree. Uh, bleh. So my brush is getting dry, and I'm starting to see, and you can see it here, starting to see the canvas underneath it. I don't like that. That's not what I want. So I'm going to dip into my water and go back to my paints and mix in a little more water with my paint. Okay, and then maybe dip into my water again and have a very wet brush for this. Um, let's do some other crookedies here. Oh, that just brought the color out. Don't want it quite that bright. I'm gonna mix some, mix some white in with that. That was too bright. That's a foreground tree now. I do that, okay. Crooked tree, crooked tree. And I'm like twirling my brush a little bit to give it a little bit of gnarl in it. All right, so got some good background trees. They don't have to have any shading. They don't have to have any detail because they're background trees. But I want some variation in my background trees. So I'm gonna put mix in a touch and I don't mix it. I'm just gonna put a dot of crimson on that and then a dot back into the, the blue and make a couple background trees that are purpley. Bring them up and then refer back to my picture a little bit. You see it? So um, maybe this guy has a purple branch. That branch is a little purpley. And I don't know if you can see how purpley this is. And the, the, the light definitely changes through the internet. So sorry about that. It's going to pick up some more crimson. Um, I like to have dots of crimson show. I think that is fun. And it gives the painting a lot of sparkle and some vibration and movement. Oh, there we go. That one's a little better. I like how he's showing a little better. And maybe I'll go back to that one that I just painted and give it a little more crimson to it. If you can see that. It's gonna have some crimson branches. So I'm painting all background trees right now. Okay, some of them go together, all background. 
I wish I could see you all so that I could see how you're doing on your trees. Um, I think I might need some more background trees right here in the center. If I look at all my pictures that I have done, there have been a lot of trees in an aspen tree grove, okay? Lots of trees back here and they, they kind of grow. Some of them come from each other. So I'm gonna do a couple more, maybe in the center. Um, pick up a little more of my crimson, a little bit more water, rub off some of the crimson, maybe a little white and a little light blue. Kind of blup it together, but not mix it too much. I'm gonna have a couple that come from the same mom here, mom tree. Aspens are cool. I don't know if you know this, but um, aspens in a grove are all the same thing. They're all the same organism. Um, really, really cool to think about that. So when you see, look at the mountainside, and you see all the aspens, that's, you know, you look at one group of them, that's, that's all one organism. So this one's from the same, this one's from the same stem. So I have a lot of background trees going in right now. And now I'm going to move to the foreground a little bit. You can hear me referring to my, my painting plan here. So we're not going to worry about any, any details right now, but now we're going to start going thicker and close in and farther. So the trees are going to look bigger. So farther forward and darker. So I'm going to pick up more of my blue. I'm still gonna kind of dab it in with the white, but I'm gonna pick up more of my blue, maybe a touch of crimson in there, but more blue than anything. And I'm gonna start thinking of big, fun trees. Next. So I'm gonna look, maybe go on your tab. I'm gonna look at some cool trees that we have here. I really like that tree. If you see it right there, I really like that tree. I really like this tree, um, but I want them on this side. So what do I do? Um, I flip it over, yeah. So I'm gonna start all the way down here and I'm gonna press more with my brush and then I'm going to make my tree like that. And I need to wet her, so I'm gonna dip in to more water. You can see that, dip in more water. Go right over and you're like, wait, I kind of like that tree behind it. Bye bye other tree behind it, enjoyed you. And I want this tree a little thicker and a little more towards the foreground. And you see, this is not dark enough because it's blending into the tree behind it. So I'm gonna dip in. And pick up some blue, make it on the edge of my brush right there. And I'm gonna pull that edge up so that I can really see that that tree's in front of the other one. And I'm gonna definitely make this one in front. And has a couple of little branches up to the side. And I just lift up when I'm doing it, lift up so it's a little more delicate, my brush. I, I use the brush sideways this time. I don't hold it flat. I use the sideways and that gives me a little more detail. Okay. If you come in and you say, oops, I made this branch, this came out thicker, you're gonna have to make the whole branch thicker. So I'm gonna go back in. The whole branch is gonna be a little less delicate. Happy little accidents. Thanks, Bob Ross. Okay. And let's look at some other big old trees here. Pull in some more blue. More, a little bit of white, more blue, a little pink in there. I need some tree friends over here. Some biggies. Dip into my water a little bit, go back into that, go back up that trunk. Water a little bit, go back. 
I'm giving these a ton of crisscrossy branches, as you can see, because I'm going to paint in the middle. Um, I'm going to paint in kind of like stained glass, and it's going to be fun. Crisscrossy branches and a little zigzaggy branch off of it. Ooh, I like it. That makes me happy. And little branches coming up. Lots of branches go up. They like to go up because they're going up to the sun. That one kind of just dried out. That's okay. It kind of put it in the background that way. I get another super bright and dark one, a couple over here, because aspens really never grow alone. They, that's kind of what makes them aspens. You look at a cottonwood, a cottonwood's on its own. Thought of doing a cottonwood painting because I love cottonwoods. They are just soul trees for me, but aspens are just fun to paint. And I was in the mood. And that tree right there. I'm going to refer back and see, see if I can see a tree in one of these that makes me happy. And kind of get some ideas from it, how their branches are going. Not digging this one that much, so we're going to reconfigure it. It's going to be a So I don't know if any of you have painted an impressionist painting before. Um, I think they're harder, personally, I think it's harder to paint in an impressionist style than it is to paint in a more realistic style. Because I think any, not anyone, but many people can just look at a tree and, and do it exactly. And that that is one level of skill but to kind of get the spirit of the tree is impressionism and the spirit of the whole painting the impression of the painting is impressionism so i i really think it, it's harder um when i i first was attempting i so frustrated because i wasn't i i was used to a level of success with realistic painting um, that I wasn't having because it was just a new challenge, uh, kind of like switching from skiing to snowboarding or whatever you do. Okay, I'm getting bored with these colors and I need some vibration in these colors. I'm pulling in some more red here or crimson. If you look carefully at this painting here. I don't know if you, how you can see it with the glare. So not this painting, this image. Um, you could just see shades of uh, brown and gray and taupe. But if you look at the edges, kind of like an impressionist, you're gonna see some vibrating red in there and you're gonna see some blue in the trunk. And it's hard to see over this, but if you look at the image, you're going to just kind of see that and some red and blue in, in with those duller colors. We're going to paint all with those bright colors. And that's why I'm dipping in a little bit to this red or this crimson, and I'm getting it on the edge. I'm just putting it on the tip of the brush. And as I paint, it will just hit an edge that hit in the middle, painting right over it, okay? And there's a kind of vibration that goes with it and some movement that you're gonna end up liking, I think. The modern impressionists are super bright and vivid. A lot of them, um, I, I, love their, I love their work. It really speaks to me when I see it displayed anywhere and it just makes me super happy. So I want to do something that makes me happy too here. Um, 
I have a lot of pairs of trees and yes, they like to grow in pairs, but I'm going to put this one. Now that bummer that I'm going to, it needs to be kind of a background tree and I've got to go over mine. So I'm going to skip right there when I get to that branch that I really like right there. And I'm going to go, I need a background tree right there. So it's kind of a middle ground. Pull in some red because as I said, getting a little bored with the same old, same old blue color. some water in that. So I don't know if any of you when you were little ever did a scribble drawing where you scribbled all over the page with like a black crayon and you just did a big swirly scribble like and with a lot of open spaces and then you stopped with your black crayon and then you came in with other colors and painted in the the spaces in between or colored in the spaces in between i spent a lot of time doing that as a kid when i was bored that was something i did um, we did not have a lot of coloring books in my life uh, my mom was an artist, um, not professionally, but she was not so big on coloring books. And um, so I did that and I loved it. And actually I found it more fun than coloring books because it was a little more free. I got to express myself a little more. Um, my colors could be what I wanted, but if you're painting, you know, all the coloring books were like Casper the Friendly Ghost, like that's no fun to color. So we're going to be doing, the reason why I mentioned that is because we're basically doing that scribble drawing and see all these spaces in between. We're going to mosaic them. So I'm going to make sure I'm making some branches that cross over so that I can see them. So this forest is getting pretty thick. I think I'm about there. Okay, got a pretty thick forest. Now what I'm going to do is it's time to kind of rinse, rinse brushes, change water, and take a little break for a minute. Because we've got to wait for this to dry a bit. So clean your brush out, get some water, take a minute or two. This is a good time to get a refill. Seems super wet in some of these spots. Check in with some of my pictures, see if I like how the balance is, like I look pictures, sure, it's fine. So what I don't want to do is get the blue mixed in with other stuff, but this blue, that's the reason why this blue can just take over. Um, so I'm also probably going to, oh, that's dry enough. It shouldn't mix when with, with my colors. Like if I'm, I can just go right on top of that. I'm a super fast, lazy painter and cheap painter. Try not to waste paint. I use cheap brushes. Um, I get them from wherever, you can get brushes at Walmart, at the craft store, I got some of these at Ikea. Yeah. Did you know that Ikea has brushes? They do. Places. Forgot to do mute on my phone. Sorry, you can hear my notifications. All right, so I'm waiting for this to dry a little bit. It is getting pretty dry. You can see up in here, most of it's dry. I'm gonna avoid anything. So I'm gonna, if you, if you're not sure if it's dry, you're going to look at it with light, um, with a light and you, anything that's sparkling right now is not dry enough. So you don't want to paint that area. All right. So now I'm too impatient to keep going on or to not go on. So I'm going to get a very wet brush again and I'm pretending like I changed water, but really I'm just getting another thing like Martha Stewart does. Not doing the Bob Ross cleaning with so much fun, but would make a mess all over my colleague's desk. That would be a bad thing. 
And I am gonna make some pink sky background. Now I know I'm gonna do this yellow in there, but I want some pink to shine through um, just, just for funsies. It gives it a different, different look. So I'm gonna do a lot of white, okay? And as I know I said we mostly don't mix a bunch with this, but I am. And a barely any of that crimson. So that's too pink. I want this to be like, you thought of pink, like lighter than the blue in there. And I'm gonna find some spots in here and I am just going to paint them pink. Like maybe there's some pink that goes in between this. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna use any brush. This one's kind of a fatty. Not only is it a fatty, it has some hair sticking out of it, which is super annoying. And gotta pull that hair out. I didn't bring scissors with me to cut it out. Okay, so there's my mosaic. Maybe I want some pink back here. Paint that over that. And oh yeah, that brought that one in the background a little bit. Pulled that in the background. Maybe there. Some other pink spots in here. And you see how I'm like pulling, I'm going to, there's these spaces in between, the negative spaces in between, and kind of painting in here. It's so kind of like coloring. I'm just gonna pick a few places to do that too. Um, I can always go over it with the yellow if I don't like it. Ooh, I like where that came through. Um, and I can go back and do this again, but I just wanted to do a few of them while this was drying. That's super fun. They don't really have to connect. Um, it's nice to have them in kind of the same area and you think of like a swirl of pink going through kind of the same area, but they don't have to completely connect. I love this negative space right here that's right in here. So I'm gonna highlight that a little bit. And I'm gonna paint pink in it. And it's okay if I go over my trunk a little bit. I'm not gonna cover completely over the trunk. Wash off my brush a little bit. And so I'm gonna get some of the meaty stuff because we wanna get some meaty stuff done. Um, all right, we're gonna switch to cadmium yellow now or whatever yellow you have, all right? So I'm gonna get a big blob of that because I'm gonna use a big blob of it. I still have some wet crimson in there, um, crimson or did I say my color was magenta? Um, I still have some wet. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use this, this kind of cruddy brush. Um, it's kind of a stiff cruddy brush. It's not a great one. I usually like soft ones, but we're going to do some foliage. And sometimes it's nice to have a stiffer brush for things like foliage. Um, we're going to um, paint some background leaves. So some of the leaves that come in the back of our, our painting here. I'm going to pull up painting that done. Four. Uh, well, actually, so here's a here's a, a picture that we have, and then that's how the background of leaves looks like. That's just a, an Im image I um, had before, but I'm gonna pull that up. All right. So I'm gonna have some background leaves. These aren't the ones that sit on top of the branches. These are the ones that are behind the branches. The one that the ones that the branches sit on. So. I'm going to get a lot of the yellow, but if I show you on the, the plate on my palette, um, if I paint that, look how clear that is. Like I'm painting right over the sides here. It is pretty clear and it comes out. There's a, there's a lot of light that comes through it and I like that, but in some places I'm going to opaque it up. By, I'm going to put a little bit of white in with it and it's going to make it stick a little better. You see how you can see the red right through there uh, of my plate and right there it covered up more. I'm gonna use some of that. And I'm going to be painting in a lot of these areas. And remember, I kind of wanted a lot of yellow in the middle. So I'm gonna paint yellow in the background here. And it's gonna be a super sunny yellow, super sunny yellow. Now, if I paint over these blue branches, it's gonna turn green. Green can take over your painting so easily. Um, I love green, it's my favorite color, but it can just take over a painting sometimes. And so that's why I'm kind of opaquing it up a little bit with the white so that if I do go over it, that I don't end up with too much green because 
this painting isn't a green painting. It's a, it's more of an autumn painting, which is kind of weird. They're in the spring. It could be a spring painting too, because there's a lot of yellow in spring too. Painting in between. I don't have to get all the way to the branch either. I can just do lightly around the branch. I'm gonna paint some more there. I can always paint over this yellow with a little bit of crimson, but I'm gonna do a lot. This negative space is so fun, and I'm gonna paint that. It's an awesome one. Okay. So I'm going to move to this negative space here. And I, this is one of the places to me is going to be like a crux of the painting, like a crux of your climbing or whatever. Um, I want, this is going to show that this is a mosaic here. I'm going to switch colors for me. Like, so if you were just doing a regular realistic painting, you would have had this in the background and painted over it. But I'm going to switch colors for here and I'm going to go down all the way to the bottom, which isn't realism. Okay, I'm going to switch colors by pulling in some crimson or some pink, whatever you want to call it, magenta, to pull it into that yellow. And I'm going to have an orange then. And you notice I didn't overmix my color. Okay, I'm still seeing variations while I'm painting this. There should still be variations. Okay, as I go down to the bottom of this, it's going to get lighter because I've used up my color and I'm going down to the bottom of that and you see this is totally it's like a, a totally different color than this right here then I'm like oh that would look bad if it was all I'm going to start pulling that color in other places maybe I want that in there I mean I'm going to make it make sense a little bit but not be overly realistic. Pull in a little more pink. Oh, too much. Pull that out. Oh, that's okay, actually. Kind of like that. No, nah, not too much. Okay, I'm gonna pull that over here. Okay, and when I've mixed this alizarin crimson, I can go right over those branches now because that just it actually just deepens it i'm going to pull this to be a different color too it's going to be in between these two colors okay, i'm going to leave that one white because i've got to decide what color i'm going to do pull that in there and paint more around there oh this is so fun it's not fun stuff Ooh, like how that came out see that now, it's hard. It may be hard. It may come out dull where you, you know, what you're seeing. But these colors are super bright that I'm doing. I This is not dull. There is no muted. There's no brown. These are super bright that I'm doing. Super bright. The only muted colors that I really have in here are the, the pink. And it, it, it's going to be kind of jarring to see the pink. It's kind of cool. Okay, so I'm going to go in there. There. Now I'm going to maybe go back to more yellow again. So I'm going to yellow, a little white. I didn't ever clean my brush in there. There's still some of that crimson in there. I'm not going to clean my brush. I refuse to. Okay. Some places I do just go over the branch. That's... Hmm. Hmm. More over here. I want some bright. Okay, I did just go over that one because it was. I'm getting impatient now. I'm just gonna go over some of these branches. Pull that. One. Pull more red in. Some people really like to do a lot of details on things. Some people want to get a quick impression. I think I'm more of a quick impression kind of person. I used to be very detailed. And then when I was taking art classes, my um, when I was in art 
uh, I mean, actually, it might have even been in high school. No, it was in it was in college. Um, <laughs> the the teacher, don't know if it's a full professor or not, banned me from details for a while. Um, absolutely would not let me do anything detail, and. Um, in fact, made me do all my drawings on huge pieces of paper on the floor, huge pieces of newsprint, and um, had me actually splint my arms and put charcoal on the end of a large stick and draw with my left hand for like a week. And then no more details for me after that. Okay, now I'm gonna start going over it a little bit because I was getting, as I said, getting impatient. Do some more background yellow, more background yellow. Now look at the overall look. We've got some yellow going here. I think I'm gonna um, have a little yellow. I think I'm gonna just stick with blue over here, but I think there needs to be more yellow in here. So I'm really hoping to get some of that sun coming through. Okay, now I'm looking and I think I want some of these to be pink. So I'm gonna go in with another brush because I don't wanna clean my brush. Because as I said, I'm super lazy with that. So I'm going to pull some that don't want orange. Don't want orange. Ugh, I touched the yellow. Messy palette alert. I'm going to pull that pink in a little bit more because I loved that area of pink. Pull that in here and pull that in here. I think that's kind of cool. And who has that? Pink, right in the middle of your painting. And now it's blending into that yellow and this brush will have to be cleaned. And I did that on purpose, let's say. I'll just pretend. Okay, I'm gonna pull that yellow in a little bit more here. And maybe in here. And here. And fill in, quickly fill in some of the areas that, now I don't have to have all of them because if I let the blue come through that sky, okay? So it's sky shining through and that pink is sky, but I'm gonna get some in that like that color of yellow. Something I'm definitely missing with this, with this teaching method is I really like getting to know all you all. Um, it's so fun and see what your experience with art is um, one of my favorite things to do if we have classes again together ever at the Longmont Museum um, is talk about painting failures and craft failures. I love that because you've got to have a lot of failures. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I painted three paintings trying to plan this out that are so bad that I can't even paint gesso over them and reuse like failures. Blech. So ugly. Can't ugh. like my husband, who's like my biggest fan painting. He thinks I'm awesome, which is great. Um, he, he was like, Oh, what? Oh, it's horrible. Pretty bad. Okay. So I'm also, I'm looking, so maybe behind here, there's a layer of trees. Um, back here that are in the distance and they've all got yellow foliage. And I don't know, I, I um, should have told you that before. So that's what I'm thinking. So I'm gonna have some, some trees back here with yellow foliage um, and it's gonna kind of end in this area. So I'm just looking at kind of a, a big blobby oval, like a cloud shape that would be foliage back here. And it's kind of, and that's behind here. And um, if I'm gonna have that back there, there's probably another group that's back here. Too much, mix it in. Tape on my painting plan, sticking to my palette. Okay, we're gonna have you group here. Okay. Pull in some orange in there. Getting dry on my palette. Gonna have to go in. Mess with pinky there. Okay. Not super exact right now. Okay. So that's 
Okay. I think that's pretty good. Um, I want more light here. I'm going to pull in some white with that and blend in some white on that. Okay. And then I'm going to go back in. I think I want a little more light here too, coming through a little white, lighten it up a little bit. Okay. I'm going to let it dry. I'm going to go back with a cleaner brush. Thin yellow on top of that white, and that will give me some light. Okay, I should have let it dry longer. But I don't want it to mud. I'm gonna, if I don't want it to mud, I could, I should wait a little bit longer um, for it to dry so it doesn't turn into mud. Um, a couple of these spots I just had white here. I'm just gonna put the lightest shade of yellow, and that is like sunlight peeping through those trees. Okay. Sunlight peeping through those trees right there. Okay. Ooh, that's a good one. Okay. Um, I'm going to pull in some blue in here. Um, I'm going to kind of follow some tree sh shapes. I'm going to pull in some blue here, and it's going to make green. And we are going to have some bright green in here. I think there's going to be some, some green trees, some green leaves and the foliage, because that is the way things are. So I'm going to pull a tiny bit of this blue into some of this yellow over here, and I'm going to keep it way away from everything else. And boy, did that make a green right away. I need more. Okay, and I'm gonna pull that in there and make some green foliage in there on that light. Okay, so maybe there's some trees back here that haven't totally changed and they're gonna be, and I'm gonna start using texture in my, I mean, before I was just coloring it in, I'm gonna use some texture in this and have some that light, um, maybe kind of sideways-ish branches or leaves, but still just feelings here. All right. Let's see how that looks. I wouldn't do it all around. Just make it messy. Don't go all around. Just pick an area, do it, and then pick another area. You need a couple areas, but you don't want too many. Um, I'm going to come back to that green later. I think I'm going to... Um, I'm feeling like I need to do the undergrowth. So um, I have some green on there and I like to, I like to use the same brush, but not totally clean it out and just kind of clean it out. We're gonna do some green in the background, but we're gonna kind of mud that green. So you have this green that turned out super bright here. That's super bright. Um, you can see there's some dried paint maybe in there. That's okay. It's going to just give you some texture in there. there. Um, one more yellow. I'm going to make more green because we're going to use a lot of it. So I'm going to make more green. And I want it to, to be more of a yellow green. Um, and that's a kind of a dark background, but I need it to mud a little bit because green can just overpower. And most things I don't want to mud too much in a bright impressionist painting, but I'm going to mud it by scooping up a little of my magenta and I'm going to put it in with it and I'm not going to blend it very much. And I'm going to do a background right in here. I'm going to kind of swoop my, um, there's going to be maybe back bushes, back bushes in the back. So I'm going to do those in a kind of a bushy, Uh, bushy brush stroke. I, I'm going to let it go over the tree trunk some places. Okay. Um, this is pretty dark and pretty bright. So I might want to pull in some more, some more crimson. Okay. And you see, I'm leaving crimson dots in there. Okay. That it's overall going to give it the darker, um, more muted, uh, background effect even without blending it and turning it brown okay so i'm not blending you see i'm just dabbing in i'm going to mean use i'm dabbing in dabbing in and then i'm going to make some background bushes here and if you can see a little closer there's some great great um it's like it could be berries whatever it, it's going to give it some vibration and some life back there. And some of these, I'm going to tuck them behind the trees, some of the foliage. Okay. Um, 
some of this gets more muted as I'm using it. I'm gonna use all the paint on my brush. Okay. Um, I'm gonna tuck the like all these trees in the background. We need to hide their um, their feet. Not very good manners to have bare feet in the forest, apparently. So pull that up. I'm gonna need more crimson pretty soon. Awesome. Some more bushes. Some of these bushes kind of lean up against their buddies here. There was some one behind this tree. Don't really want any white showing right here. So we're going to figure out how not to have white because white's going to make it look unfinished. Okay. Get more crimson on my palette. My palette gets so messy and I'm okay with that. There, if you're not okay with that, that's okay too. Okay. Oh, wait, that is super crimson y, and I'm just going to pull it forward with that. Pull that because I like that. That's going to go forward and it's going to be a little darker. This was a little dark for a background, probably shouldn't have done that, but that's okay. We're going to pull in the crimson. And start going over the feet of those two. And as it kind of wears off my brush, I can fill in some of that background again where I needed to get it fuller in there because that's so you see it's lighter, a little muddier, and I'm going to put it behind some of these places where I needed to put some stuff behind it. So when you're painting and things, um, or when you're looking at landscape, the landscape actually gets darker as it comes forward. Um, doesn't always seem like that. I just pulled in some yellow. Don't know why, because I kind of wanted some background here, I think. Tuck that tree in a little bit. Wanted some variety. Don't really like that right there. Paint over it. It's okay. Cool thing about acrylics. Don't like it? Tomorrow you can paint over it. Unless you really messed it up. But also the cool thing about painting is really, generally I don't always like my paintings that much um, the day I do them. Um, the next day I come in and I'm Hey, that's pretty cool. Okay, so I'm gonna pull in some blue on this. I'm gonna start going forward and I'm pull in some blue and I'm gonna go forward in this one, okay, right here, because I felt like it. So I have this dark foot over this. It's my dark foot, okay. Um, I'm gonna make more green, that blue. Make some more green and get the back. A um, Little bit of white just for fun, because I pulled it in, a little bit of crimson. And I'm going to see what I got here. So here we have this bush that's growing right here. And my strokes are dabs. Okay. Um, nothing super smooth in uh, kind of an impressionist painting. Okay. So this was a mistake. So I did dark right here. It's kind of bugging me. Did dark right here and I lightened up coming forward. So I'm going to have to figure out how to make that work is bad when you start out too dark. But the worst is when the whole painting is too light. Actually, I really hate that with drawings. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little background in here. Okay, and move this over here. Ooh, look at this good blue green that I got going here. And I'm going to feather this out a little bit because I need some, some of this covered. I'm going to go over it in a minute. Give it some texture. Okay. 
So still going to pull in some yellow over here because really over here I have a yellow, a yellow bush that's kind of on fire here. Okay. And this is getting boring to me over here. So I'm going to um, remember that and I'm going to put um, some trees coming out of that, I think. I'm not going to do that now because it's too wet to do it. Okay, I'm pulling some blue to make it dark, give it some dark feet. So maybe this is the grass, the undergrowth right here. Okay, um, pull in some orange in there with that. Just blopping in with some brights. Not really sure which color is going to come out with that. So that's some more yellow. I'm running out of paint. Yay! That's always a good sign. Run out of paint and get some more. We're going to go back up here and make it better. Um, we're just making it dark in the bottom. Okay. Get some dark in the bottom. Okay, we're gonna have some light trees or light bushes in here because I think that will balance it out better. But you just do what you need to do. Have some blue undergrowth. Still using a pretty small brush with this because I need the texture. I want some texture in there. Now I'm gonna maybe I could pull it out and it's grass. I can pull it up. Maybe that's grass. Pull some more up. That's grass instead of dabbing. Yeah, that'll be good because could use some grass in here. Okay, now if I'm going to do grass like that, though, I love me some red grass. So I'm going to pull in some of that magenta. Got to pull more of it in. Look at this messy, messy palette. Super messy. Go. Okay. Um, I might pull in some yellow there. Okay, so I still have green on here. So it's gonna make the yellow not completely yellow because that would be ridiculous because this is right in the center, right? It would be ridiculous to have just a big yellow plant right in there that was all yellow. So okay. and pull it in here because there's the yellow plant growing in here. It's mixing it with the blue a little too much. Oops, I did this big splot. <laughs> My friend's desk has got a big splot on it. Okay, I'm just gonna leave that. Not that part on the desk, look, all gone. Um, not the part on the desk, but I'm gonna leave that right here. I'm gonna let some stuff dry in here and then I'm gonna go back and see what fun I can have later um, and get some sparkles in there. I need to get some stuff going up here. So we've got a super messy down below and looks like there's no foliage on the trees up top. I am gonna wash my brush. Now, it's not going to be a perfect brush, okay? I am going to put some low lights in these, these trees. I'm going to use a little, I'm going to go into um, some of the, the colors that I've mixed. I'm going to start putting foliage that goes over the other branches. So, and I'm going to start using horizontal strokes. So, I'm going to have some some foliage in here. So it's still um, quite a bit, quite mosaic-y, but not all of it's mosaic-y. There's some leaves in the mosaic part. I'm gonna try to avoid as much green as I can. Not gonna put much green. I do want some of that red though in there. Pulls it in there. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm gonna have some foliage. Look, it went right over that tree because foliage does do that. Now, do you see that that tree is showing through? So that's not working for me. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna put a little bit of white. Wipe it off, put a little white right there. Okay, and I'm gonna wait for a bit. I'm gonna smooth that out. I'm gonna wait for a bit and I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna paint over it, okay? Um, right here too, that needs some white over it. It's gonna make it more opaque. Okay, now I'm gonna go back with my yellows that I had with a little bit of crimson and I'm gonna make some, some more leaves. Okay. Pulling more crimson, some little lights in here. Oh, I like that. That was good, good job me. Congratulate yourself, it's the little things. So as you do this, hopefully you're starting to appreciate the Impressionist painters a lot. And if you haven't seen our Monet exhibit, it is so inspiring, um, especially once you've tried to do this and you realize that how much, I, just to me, this is so much harder to make an impression of light coming through and the movement and the vibration between this, to make that impression, then to just paint realistically, just completely, totally realistically. I think it's so much harder. And my appreciation for people like Monet or Aaron Hansen or you know any of the impression, Degas, it, it just has gone up exponentially since I, uh, since I started exploring Impressionism in my own work. Um, if you can, definitely get a chance to come to our to our museum. And if you're from not by our museum, hey, come to Longmont, especially after you've been vaccinated. It'll be great and come visit us and come visit us at our museum. Okay, where do I need foliage? So I need to hold it back sometimes. You gotta step back from your painting. So I'm actually gonna stand up see where I could use some more foliage over here and some of these some of these branches might still have leaves on it and I've got this really nice reddish orange on here in this foliage and I'm going to get it and then you can see and speaking of museum we have some of the coolest programs here and to me, the coolest ones, because I am generally a summer instructor, are our summer camps. We still have openings in our summer camps. We have the coolest summer camps. We have art summer camps. We have zombie apocalypse summer camps. We have history summer camps in theater. Just, we have the most fun instructors and kids come back and it, it's just, they come back year after year because they have so much fun and they really connect with our instructors. We even have scholarships available. We still have scholarships available. And um, if you know of anybody who their kids need a really rich um, summer experience, this is the place for it. And, um, no, it's not overnight, um, but we we just put so much into our summer camp. Um, our summer camps are just there. There's so much preparation and so much love and detail go into our summer camps. They are amazing. So hopefully, if you have kiddos, and when I say kiddos, I don't mean like little kiddos necessarily, because we do have summer camps for little kiddos, but we also have, they go up to age 18. So you definitely, we can find something for everyone. In our camps. We have Dungeons and Dragons summer camp that is amazing. 
so amazing. So I'm gonna get some red in there with my, in between my vibrate against that green right there, that orange. And I'm getting kind of close here. I'm getting kind of close to feeling like I might be done. It's hard to know. I've got to go back to this because I'm not really liking it. But it's okay. I might like it tomorrow better. Um, got to go back to this when it's dry. But often I hate my paintings until the next day. And then sometimes even the next day is a little early for me. But I go back weeks later and I'm like, oh my gosh, I really like that. I did that and I'm so proud of myself later. I hope you're proud of yourself too with what you've done. Hopefully you're learning and you're learning from yourself too. It should be fun and it should be an exploration. And really, even if you don't like your finished product, hopefully you have fun doing it. And if you don't have fun doing it, then take a step back and say, hmm, I'm just going to loosen up a little bit because this should be fun for me. I don't have to be perfect. I don't have to like everything I do. It's really hard when you've been to, and a lot of you probably have been told what a great artist you are, what a, a great painter, you know, or like, oh, you drew something and it was like, oh, that's so cool. Well, that's kind of a burden I've found because then you think everything's supposed to be good. You know what? Everything is not going to be good ever in life, You're always going to have some things that don't turn out perfect. Okay. So I have this horizontal thing, got some leaves going here, got some kind of like look in the background. Okay. The dark, the bottom's too dark for me. That's okay. I'm going to pull in some light. I'm going to pull in some, I'm going to maybe, oh, believe it or not, switch brushes, clean brush. Maybe I'm going to pull in a clean brush. Dip it in some yellow and some, and then see if I can get some some grass in here to lighten up some areas. Um, maybe have a there's that dark blue. Maybe have a orange that goes over it. No, it's not orange. No, it's orange. Okay. Um, so, oops. Let out, get some more yellow going, pull out the green. Just making some strokes with this, getting some, some pretty grasses going. And this in there. This is way too dark. So let's, maybe I'm gonna get some pink from that background because that pink, I'm gonna pull a whole other brush because I don't wanna clean that off completely. So I said too lazy. Oh, look, I wanna get a clean thing. I'm gonna make some pink. How do I do that? Okay, I found some white over here, still clean. Okay, got some white. Dip into that pink a little bit, make some pink, make it a little bit brighter because it's forward, right? A little brighter and darker. Make that pink though. I'm still gonna echo because it's the same things I used. And it's still gonna echo. Maybe we got some, didn't like the grass, but maybe we've got some flowers in here. Some flowers that go in with that. I'm like, wait, flowers in the forest? It's your forest. Flowers there if you want to. Okay, maybe there's a little pink bush. Happy little bush. Hope that's not trademarked. Sorry, Bob. This. I don't think you can trademark happy. Flowers in here. And you can mix with those flowers. Make sure I don't have any, like I'd rather have the wrong color than white down here. Don't want white. Definitely don't want white down at the bottom. It's not a finished painting of that. So I'm even just gonna 
mush that together so I don't have any white there. Okay, um, if there's pink over there, probably should be some pink over here. Didn't completely destroy that brush. Pink over here. Because you don't want a unicorn of pinkness. Okay. I think I'm done for today. I have painted a whole canvas. I've smushed it all up. Um, I've got some light coming through. I can definitely see some light coming through. So um, mostly I don't know if I like the painting until the next day, but I do know that I like the light that came through here. And I do know that I like some brightness and that I'd probably be happy in this forest. I think maybe I'd be scared right about there. Um, if you really, really think your painting is not awesome, wait until tomorrow, come back in with a Sharpie and draw mythical creatures into the whole thing. And then it becomes not an impressionist painting at all, but it becomes super funny and creative. Like maybe I have like a where the wild things are gremlin or whatever these guys are in there or something like that if I think I can't deal with this painting tomorrow. But I think I am um, pretty much done with this. Hope you had fun. It does not look like my first painting of this. This was my first painting. It doesn't really look like that. I have more sky in this painting and a lighter underneath. That's just how it goes. It doesn't really look like my second. Looks more like my third. You can see, do a lot of paintings to do one painting that you like. And you just pick the one you like, okay. Um, maybe, you know what, actually I'm not done. I lied. I'm not done because I really feel like I need to aspen these up a little bit. So I'm going to pull in, I have some, I have a couple minutes to do this. I'm going to pull in the darkest purple I can get. So I'm going to squirt some blue in and then I'm going to take a flat brush and I'm going to dip it into the blue with a little bit of the red. And I'm going to do some, oops, you can see. I'm going to do some aspeny looking lines in here. That's really going to make it better. That's what I noticed. So I'm going to do some lines through and make some scars in these trees. And I'm going to do them towards the sides because that's going to round out your trees a little bit better. And then I'll do one in the middle and then maybe some down toward the sides. And then I even do them in the back. So as the paint comes off my brush, I can, it will be lighter in the background trees. Okay. And then I redip it in, make that super dark purple. Get some scars going on there. You have a lot of scars. And I need to, like, right there is where the old elk rubbed its antlers. Okay, yeah, that's what this needed is scars, okay? This needs a highlight in this tree. So I'm gonna take, I paint with my fingers a lot, take a little bit of white on my finger, highlight that tree a little bit, down. Really, she just painted with her fingers. She's teaching me to paint with my fingers. No, you paint with whatever you want. Okay, I'm gonna highlight that one a little bit too. Okay, I highlighted that one. Put a couple stars in the middle of that highlight. I just brought it way forward. Okay. There we go. And as the paint comes off my brush, I'm gonna do those scars again. So sorry I forgot you scars. We all have our wrinkles and our scars and it makes us more beautiful. We gotta make sure our trees feel honored for their past as well. A little more blue. Don't make them regular, make them together and then don't, you know, don't just fence post it. Okay. Some more scars here, right where the, the elk go. Okay. I think that's better. Oh yeah. 
definitely better. Makes those trees round again. Okay. All right. I hope you had fun. I had a ton of fun. It was a good thing to do in the middle of a hard week. We've all had some big weeks lately. And um, a really good thing for us to do is to get together and do some painting and take a break and forget about the rest of the world for a little while. So thanks again from the Longmont Museum. I'm Erin and have a good night.